Hello, everybody. Terry Harden, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. I've appeared in films like Ghostbusters, Men in Black. So I guess it's Terry Harden, pop icon. How are you today? Happy Monday. And uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, sorry, I'm a bit late. Uh, I have an amazing group of people in my tribe on the Patreon page. And today I seriously, seriously needed them. So I hope that you will be understanding and know that I did not forget you, but I needed to speak with them today. They are my love, my life, my, my therapy. And I needed some therapy today from my friends. There's no better therapy. Let me tell you that now. There's no better therapy than being with friends. And uh, I am very, very blessed to have so many of them on my Patreon page. And their voices are just so valuable to me as a human being. And I am happy to say that my voice is valuable to them as a human being. My Patreon page is different from most. I'm not just saying that out of arrogance um, or narcissism. It really is a different page. And I'm talking about it today because I think you need to understand the importance of being a part of it. So let me just open with that. It's not a sales pitch. Oh gosh, another person pitching their Patreon page. Well, if that's the way you feel, then say la la for about the next two minutes, okay? I really need to tell you this because I needed my people in my tribe today. I needed them more than I've needed them in a long time. I'm going through a lot of stuff personally. One of them, my dad in the hospital, my mom in the convalescent hospital, and they couldn't be farther away from each other. And I've got to see them both often because I'm the only one who goes to see them. Okay. You follow me? If you're in my boat, you know what I mean. And sometimes that can be taxing. You can feel like that cat that sticks on the windshield that is like that. Uh, you just, you just feel stretched in every direction. And then there's your own life you have to deal with. So that in a nutshell is what's happening. And I needed to talk to my tribe about it. So patreon.com slash Terry Harden. If your voice, if you want to add your voice to a group of people who for the most part, we sit and we talk about what is needed. How can I say this? It's a private area where we can rant without judgment where we can discuss things frankly, where we can talk about something that's bothering us or something we're celebrating. We can also ask coaching, you know, what do I do if my job has disappeared or I want to do a different job because the one I have is, is toxic for me. Whatever it is that needs to be discussed, that's this page, okay? I do two lives and one Zoom every week. With the exception of this week, I'm going to take my a day off from Zoom because I'm going through an awful lot. So I'm not going to burden you with it because that's what my page is for. I talk to them about the really frank challenges that I'm having. And that allows me to come to you as a happy, upbeat person because I have a family, this Patreon page that helps me out. And the reason I need your voice is because I think you will need us too. And I don't want to break the bank on this. It's $5 a month. So you skip a Starbucks. Or uh, don't buy that candy bar you wanted and uh, and pay for it. You can put quarters in a jar and uh, and be ready by the end of the month. Any way possible, you need to have skin in the game in order to be a part of this page. It is not a free page and it will never be a free page because I've learned that free pages are really lovely and that's why I keep this one going. OK, I'm going to be as honest with you as possible because it is my obligation to be honest with you. OK, and then we'll talk about film. I promise. But I had to open right out of the gate and let you guys know that I'm always going to be honest with you. But there's free honest and then there's frank honest, which is paid for. All right. Just so you know. Because a lot of people who are honest in a free page get dissed, don't they? They get blasted because it's easy to be behind a screen and say nasty things to someone because they don't, you don't look in their face. And that's very frustrating to me. Really irritates me. I'm just going to say it right up. I don't like it. So I like being able to be in a private page, be with people that can speak frankly and talk to me. And if they think I'm being a little full of myself or whatever, they have been given full permission to talk to me very openly. And I really appreciate that. And most of the time, it's not about me, guys. It's about them. I want them to feel comfortable and be able to say what's really bothering them in life so that they can go out and be the bright and sunny people that you all are. 
you need to have someone to talk to. And sometimes you pay for that. And sometimes you're lucky enough to have friends that were, are willing to actually really listen to you. So that's what I have. That's the Patreon page. We do all kinds of fun things too, like uh, uh, share each other's stuff. Um, I would call it a giveaway, but it's really more like, you know, Patreon says you can't do giveaways because people will want to join for the giveaway. I personally, it's not like that. I, I don't even know how to tell the Patreon people that it's a giveaway because it's really not. <laughs> people, but the people on the Patreon page send stuff so that we can put it in the treasure chest. So I'm not even, do you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's my, my, my shop is so full of generous donations for to trade with this. So maybe it's a trade. Uh, you gotta be a part of it to understand it. And if you don't like it, then give me a month. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, then you can walk away and we still love you. So consider it guys is all I'm saying. Just know it's $5 a month. And I do monthly so you can get out if it's something that's not you, okay? But this is not a sales pitch. This is a lifeline. I am throwing you a lifeline. It's your decision whether to take it or not, okay? All right, join the page because that's the deal, all right? That's the straight up deal, all right? Okay, all right, enough said. Okay, so today let's get to the topic. This is Terry TV. This is a new format and I am ever changing it this year. I want to be more like a TV show where I start to talk about issues more than just Disney. I don't want to be Disney centric. Disney will be involved and you're welcome to ask me questions about Disney, but I'm going to talk about all kinds of things. Hence today. I heard today on the news something that I thought was really important to say, which is why it was on my thumbnail today. If you love the franchise, you will see the movie. Correct? So true. Isn't this true? And I really appreciated it. It was Sam Rubin on KTLA 5 here in California. I think Sam Rubin is a, just a joy. And I think everyone on the Channel 5, that's my favorite channel when I'm watching news. And I don't watch it often because the news is terrible. And I feel for them as they, as they are forced because it's their job to report all of the garbage that's going on in the world. But I'm not going to add to that to you today. I'm going to talk about the fun stuff. And one of the fun things Sam said was, if you love the franchise, you're going to see the movie. So guess which movie killed it at the box office? That's right. Quantumania. That just blew it up. Because if you are part of the Marvel group, you're going to go see it, aren't you? And a lot of times you're going to go see it that first weekend. And I wanted to celebrate that with you guys and just say, there's nothing you need to apologize for. If you are part of the franchise, you're going, all right? For me, it used to be Star Wars, but I think Disney's screwing that one up. So I don't run to see a lot of Star Wars stuff anymore. I've got to, I've got to protect my delicate underbelly because Star Wars is family to me and it hurts me every time they do something cruddy. But that being said, it looks like they're going in the right direction. There is promise. So hopefully they'll keep doing it and stop screwing up. Uh, but but this one, um, I couldn't understand it. In fact, on Friday, I said quantum mania, media, mini ammonia, quadrophenia is usually the thing that I am old enough to know. And I keep calling it quadrophenia. So uh, forgive me for that. Today, I asked my husband how to spell quadrophenia. And he reminded me it's quantum mania. So he saved me from a real bad misprint, right? But the point is, is that it's true. If this is your, if this is your universe, you don't care what people say. It's going to be cruddy. It's bad. It's overdone. It's too much this. It's too much that. You don't care. This is your wheelhouse and you're going to go. A lot like Disney people who love the park and adore the park. And even though it's expensive and it's crowded, they don't care. They're, that is their franchise. You get it? You understand? So that's why I wanted to point this out today because I thought this was a really wonderful thing to say. And it killed it at the box office. Now, the caveat is this. Did you like it? You went and saw it right off the bat. Congratulations for you. Good for you. But did you like it? Did it serve its purpose and make you happy? I'm curious to hear what you have to say over there. Okay? Because, um, honestly, um, I haven't seen it yet. It's not. I'm not a Marvelite. And so it's not in my wheelhouse. In fact, I couldn't even pronounce the name and I didn't even know it was Ant-Man. So my husband had to tell me it was Quadra, Quadra, no, see, there I go again. See, Quantum Mania, not Quadrophenia. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm almost 66. Give me a break. Uh, uh, but anyway, that's that's what I'm talking about. I wanted to celebrate that today. And also, I wanted to tell you that I have to vote. Today is the day I pick my favorite movie of the year. What is it possibly going to be? I got to tell you, it is definitely not everything, everywhere, all at once. Although I love the actors in this movie, Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, Michelle Yeoh and the young girl who plays her daughter, it's just not my cup of tea. It really is not my cup of tea. So I will not vote for it. But I will have to say it did win the Directors Guild Award this weekend. And the reason I think it did is because it looks like it was something that was really uh, puts your director at his pace. So I think it's very well much deserved. And let me just say, should it win Best Picture from the Academy? Uh, I won't be angry. Last year, I would have been angry because it's The Power of the Dog, which was a dog and a terrible movie. This one, at least, is a fun movie. If it's your demographic, I can see if, you, if, if you're if you a person who likes this kind of chaos in films, you're going to eat this up with a spoon. You're going to be like, yum, 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 yum. And you're going to just love it. But it's just not Terry. OK, so I won't be voting for it for Best Picture or in our case, we don't really vote for a Best Picture in the Screen Actors Guild. That's right. I didn't mention that. I am a Screen Actors Guild member and I will be voting in the Screen Actors Guild and I've got to have my vote in by Thursday. But this weekend I was up against it, guys, because I they not only do films, they do series. And I had not seen 1923, which is on the docket for me to see. I have not, I did not at the time see the patient, nor had I seen the old man. And you might be going, what? Because you may not have even heard of these series, but they are up. And I have this thing about me. I'm going to tell you right now, as far as voting is concerned, I have a thing I got to see every friggin' movie that's on the list. I have to see every single one. And it's not easy. Believe me, it's a lot of movies. But I have to see every single one. So I vote for what I feel is truly best supporting actor and best supporting actress. Forgive me if you don't like the name actress. Deal with it. Uh, but but I like the best actress. I like the best actor, best supporting, best supporting. And I need to see every film in order to make a proper judgment. I don't think it's very fair if there's five dogs in the hunt. You only watch four and then you vote. Because this last performance could be it. Enter the patient. Okay. The patient, it can be seen on FX. And uh, I had to have a special, uh, uh, a special entrance to do it. I had to watch it on my computer because you click on the name of it and then it shows it to you because it's a private screening for those who vote. And um, I didn't get it in a DVD, although I wish I had because, boy, I would be watching it a lot. It's incredible. Uh, Steve Carell, the comedian. I always think of him as a comedian. One of my favorite movies he's done, which you may go, oh, is Evan Almighty. I just think it's brilliant. I think it's fun. They actually built that arc. The bad, big mistake is they should have never torn it down. What an attraction that would be. And I would be first in line. But I digress. The point is, is that I really think of him as a funny guy and his dramatic performances are not to be missed. So now I have to go back to my voting page, which I had marked who I thought it was going to be. Now I've got to think again. I've got to really think because he's really killing it in this series, The Patient. It is, in fact, everyone does a great job. And let me just tell you that one of the most chilling performances and one of the most chilling characters, and maybe she'll watch my channel, is the woman who plays the mother. That's all I'm going to tell you. The mother. Gee, many Christmas. What a scary human being she is. Uh, unbelievable. 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 And it is a series. I always groan when I watch a series because a lot of them feel like a movie that stretches over six to 10 episodes and it's agony. So what I usually do is watch one and two. And if you haven't get, given me the, the, the kind of the idea of it, I go right to eight and nine and 10 or nine and 10. And then if I feel like I've not missed nothing, anything, it should have been a movie. Hence the old man with uh, Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Watch one and two and then watch eight and nine. You'll have it. The rest of it is a lot of magma that I don't think is necessary. If you're someone who likes to be floating on the water and have these long things that are stretched out and really feel stretched out and not thought out, then it's your kind of place. But if you're not that person, 
then uh, cut to the chase with it. But the patient, I had to watch every single episode and there were 10. First time I saw that it was 10 episodes, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to take me the whole weekend. Uh, but everyone made me watch the next one and the next one and the next one. I also had to see 1923, which honestly, I love Harrison Ford, but the man has a puppy face. It's very hard to think of him as a villain. It's very difficult, especially when you've seen Kevin Costner in the in the first series, which is Yellowstone. You kind of we kind of did Yellowstone. It, it blew it up and made everything wonderful, brought Westerns back, by the way. Thank God, because I, I'm dying to be in a Western now. And it's a modern Western, which is where I fit with air like this. But. 1883 and 1923 are nice, but there are some areas where the where the people, you know, I thought 1923, 1883 was really good because who doesn't like to watch Sam Elliott just be Sam Elliott? Uh, honestly, the man is Texas. I mean, when they say cowboy, they're Sam. Uh, with that deep and drawl voice. And then when he cries, his whole face turns into like a different shape. The man is just brilliant. Wonderful. I don't even care. It could be, I could just watch him all day. He's just a brilliant, brilliant actor. Uh, but, uh, but 1923, it's hard. It's really, really hard. Helen Mirren has an accent that's a little difficult to follow. It, it, it strays and goes everywhere. And I, uh, as my husband says, I wish she just pulled back a little bit on it. I think that would have been easier for her to do that in that one. And then um, Harrison Ford is just too soft, especially he is is because he's in the same role only earlier because he's the grandpa of the Kevin Costner character. And the Kevin Costner character is just Kevin Costner has really put himself back on the map with Yellowstone because the man is a is really got teeth. And I love watching him in his performances. I never thought I'd say that. I never thought I love his performances and the word Kevin Costner would all be in the same sentence. But he proved me wrong. And that's when I really love actors is when they prove me wrong. Coming back to Steve Carell, who his dramatic performance in this is unbelievable. It is one of the most difficult types of performances because he is not straight. He cannot do it. So, see, I don't know how many of you act or many of you would never want to be on stage. But as an actor, easy stuff to play is the good girl. Oh, I'm wonderful and fabulous and precious and the villain. OK, the straight evil villain with no neutralities. You're just -ah -ah, melodramatic. Those two are very easy, happy, sad, you know. But when you play things like helplessness, um, you play uh, defeat, you play... Uh, triumph, which is easier with triumph. But I, I can't say too much about the patient without ruining it for you. But you got to see this and you got to watch all 10 and you just won't believe what he is doing. So final thing is I think I'm going to have to vote for him for the best actor in a in a leading role. And that was not my choice. Uh, my original choice was uh, Better Call Saul because I love Better Call Saul in a dramatic series. But he just, he just kicked that. I'm sorry, Saul. I'm sorry. I just really wanted to vote for you because I think you did a tremendous job this year, but this is just like nothing I've ever seen out of, out of Steve in my life. I've just never seen anything like this performance. And I think I need to acknowledge him for it. Will he win? I don't know. I don't care. I'm going to vote for who I want to vote for. In any case, that's what I have to vote for. You may be saying to yourself, what is your best picture? What are you going to vote for? Well, my problem with that was there was a lot of mediocre in my in my opinion. And I've already told you what will not be. See, see, in Screen Actors Guild, we we do best performance for a cast in a picture. We don't do best picture, okay? Um, we leave that for the Academy. But we have good tells, um, good, good tells. But this year, I have to tell you that my vote is going to be uh, Banshees of Inisherin. So uh, it's not because there's a lot of people who feel the same way, but that movie just blew me away. Um, the other person I thought that was really a good, strong actor that's the actor in the series I'm going to vote for is, uh, is a uh, Colin, um, Colin, right. Let me get my list. Forgive me. Names are hard because I, I went through stuff today. I'm going through a lot of stuff, so I can't focus like I'd like to on stuff like this, but here's my list. Uh, let me tell you, 
And that's my, that's the wrong list. That's the Oscar nomination list. I've seen every movie the Oscars I always do. Seen them since I was three. There's my list. Um, outstanding performance by a male actor in a drama series uh, is, uh, who did I pick? Oh, I didn't do it yet. Uh, drama series is going to be, I had originally, oh, wait. Maybe that's not a drama series. Oh, come on. Really? I really thought it was it was Corel. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look through this because it's not on my list. Well, that sucks because that's who I want to vote for. Oh well. Anyway, I'll get to it. But to answer uh the question I originally wanted to answer is uh, Best Actor in a Drama, which I'm trying to find now. I have Ensemble. I cannot believe he is not in there. What the heck? Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. Outstanding performance in a television movie. Oh, thank you, honey. Or a limited... Thank you. How sweet of you. Or a limited series. I'll put this over here. I won't eat in front of you, but I'm definitely going to smell it. Okay, let me just put this there. Yeah, it's going to make me feel... Really good. Forgive me, I'm going to have a bite of bacon. There. All right. Um, so, outstanding performance. Outstanding performance. Male actor in a television movie or limited series. Steve Carell. That's the one. In the patient. Okay. Which means I can still vote for Better Call Saul. Woohoo! Because they're not up against each other. All right, this is the one right here. Okay, so get back to you about what I was thinking. Um, and Blackbird is another brilliant series. I thought it was great. It's just that Steve is just killing it in this one, guys. Steve Carell is just doing so much that I didn't think he was capable of, and so he's got to be acknowledged for it. Uh, but anyway, um, let me just finish what my thought, which was... Uh, outstanding performance by a male actor that's what they say okay because they can't say best actor anymore because people think it's race uh, it's uh sexist or something i don't know i'm old i don't care uh male actor in a leading role uh uh that is right male actor in a leading role i went with brendan fraser uh however it was very hard not to vote for colin because he's amazing but i went with brendan fraser because brendan fraser is amazing that's a tough movie to watch the whale um, so anyway, best picture, uh, the best picture, which is outstanding performance by a cast. That's what we call it. Outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture. That's what we call it in the Screen Actors Guild. I don't know if you know this. I don't even know if you're interested in hearing this, but that's what it's called. And I did, um, I did, uh, 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 uh Banshees of Inna Sharon. Everything, everything. Everywhere all at once, women talking, the Fablemans and Babylon were the ones that were up. Hated Babylon, three hours of pain. Um, Banshees is amazing, but for many of you might be a little off, but I loved it. Everything, everywhere, all at once, not my type, cup of tea, so I won't be voting for it. Fablemans, I really believe Fablemans, and I've said this before, I believe the Fablesmen, Steven Spielberg had a student actually film it and put his name to it. Don't tell me it's because of his life. The subject matter is not the issue here. It's the way the movie's made. I don't see Spielberg's um, fingerprint on it. I don't. And I actually watched Schindler's List because... Uh, sometimes, uh, Steven does, you know, a lot of things like Jaws where there's a lot of action and stuff and, and, and it's big and it's bold, but Schindler's List is not, it's so beautifully made and done. And I think Fablemans could have done better if Spielberg was more involved. Now, if he was involved, he was distracted in my opinion. These are all honestly my opinion and women talking was a waste of my time. So uh, it was really uh, Banshees is the one I wanted to do when everything everywhere all at once just wasn't Terry's cup of tea. That's the only reason, guys. It is a movie that is beautifully directed. It's so wild and crazy. It's really out there. It, and usually I love these kind of movies, but there's a few subject matter that I just find very distasteful. And so I can't. I don't want to see more of it. 
I don't want to see more of some of the distasteful scenes that I saw in there. So I just can't vote for it. And that's why that's, that's the reason it's a personal, it's a personal thing. Let's hear what you have to say. There you go. Just a little bit of touching base on things. That's what Terry TV is about. Uh, I'm also going to tell you a little bit about an artist that I read about a young boy who made $1.3 million and he's only 11 with his art and his art is quite fabulous. Uh, I saw the interview, just Google boy who makes um, $1.3 million. I don't have any pictures to show you, but my gosh, pretty impressive art. I thought it was wonderful. I wish I could be as creative as him as far as my painting. His painting seems very, very him, influenced by others, of course, but it is very, very him the way he paints. Sure, we've seen it in some places, but it just, it's good. And I can see why people are paying the money and buying it from him. And congratulations, young man. I'm a little envious that you figured it out so early in life, but uh, uh, not so envious that I'm going to dislike you. I absolutely love you and good for you. Um, I hope you guys will look up that article because I will not say his name because honestly, I did not read his name. I just thought here's an 11 year old and his mother says we're going to make sure that he sticks with uh uh, that he sticks with uh, uh, being a kid. So I'm excited that he's being a kid. Really proud of him. Really, really, really proud of him. So, okay, let's see what you guys have to say. Diane says, you give much more of us members. You give to us as members of Terry's tribe. Diane is a part of it. Uh, what Diane isn't saying here is she gives me a hell of a lot as well. Uh, Linda, hello. Hi, Linda. Good to see you. So please join. $5 a month is so little. Uh, it's a month. Yeah, sometimes people think per day or a week or no, 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 it's a month. Yeah, you could put quarters in a jar. I'm sure I have a Mickey Mouse over here. I'm sure I have $5. I put quarters. I separate my quarters. Not for laundry, just because I just like the feel of a quarter, so I always save my quarters. But uh, $5 is what? Five little stacks of four? You know, so what is that, 25 So if you start your quarter jar on day one, then before the 30th, you have your $5 to join. Seriously. You spend more on who knows right? Hello, Nate. I did not say hello again to you. Hello, Bob. Honestly, the feelings are mutual. It truly is so very special to be part of the tribe. We enjoy each other. A blessing to support of love. I don't know if you've heard many people who talk about the Patreon page like these people do, the tribe. It's a different channel than what you're used to if you follow people on Terry's tribe. And I'm not saying to unfollow them because they're obviously giving you something delicious to follow. Uh, and so I'm not saying that at all. Please don't take it that way. But what I am saying is that I'm discovering as a Patreon ambassador, of which I am, that I handle the channel very differently. And I'll tell you why. It's because I'm 66 years old. I really believe that a lot of the other patrons and Patreon ambassadors are much younger than me. And I love each and every one of them. They are wonderful, fabulous people. Every generation has something to offer. And I'm grateful uh, to be a part of uh, the human being generation. So uh, consider it patreon.com slash Terry Harden. Go to Patreon. Just put Terry Harden in that search engine if you can't remember all that. And at the end of this, at the beginning of this broadcast, I post it. At the end of this broadcast, I'll post it again for you so that you can like take it off there if you wish. But it's really easy to remember. And it's just different. All I'm saying is, you know, you try it. And if it tastes good to you, then stay because I know we'd love to have you. Thank you, Bob, for saying that. Good morning and happy Monday, everyone. Hello, Joe. Do, give a, do giveaways here instead, giveaways and annual Patreon Terry's Tribe membership. Yeah, that's what they're talking about is maybe do giveaways. What I'd rather do, see, this is what I'm trying to do, okay? Because one of the things that people keep asking me is can they gift a membership to their children? Because I have a lot of young artists out there. I met a lady yesterday who wants me to talk to her young artist. And the page is very, very good for young people. But if you're not doing the $5 a month, like there are parents who want to gift it, but they have to put a credit card on file with Patreon. And that's not cool. So what I'm trying to get them to do is to create a, uh, a, membership, a, um, a gift membership so that you can gift it to them. Uh, as a gift that you would give your grandkids or you would give your children or you would give to somebody if you don't want it for yourself. Now, I could gift it to you as well, but uh, I give uh, other things. So that will not be the case. Um, that's something so far not going to happen, but it's a good idea. So maybe I will never say never, Joe. I will never say never. 
Um, I like the good, the bad, and the ugly pick. Yes, this is my one of my this is my favorite western. One of my favorite westerns right here. And I've met everyone but Clint Eastwood. I want to meet Clint Eastwood and talk to him about how much I love his body of work. I'm a big fan. But I met Eli Wallach and I met Lee Van Cleef. Yeah, I got to sit with them and tell them how much I love their performance, especially in this movie. Uh, and also I got some great Clint Eastwood stories that they both told me, which was pretty cool. So I got the bonus benefit of it. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I'm really, I'm really, really grateful. Really, really, really grateful. Hello, Adam. I personally love the film, but I know for an outsider, it may be harder to approach if you did not watch the previous two films. Of which one? Which which previous two films are you talking about? Quant Quantumania? Is that what I, did I say it right? Quantumania? I didn't say Quadrophenia, right? Quantumania. Is that what you're talking about, Adam? I think that's what you're talking about. I did see the previous two films and I love them. I think they're great. I'm just not a Marvelite. I don't absorb them, but I did enjoy them. I love the Ant-Man. My husband says he's not that important of a character, but I found him fun. I thought he was quite adorable, actually. Um, You know, what's the name of the ant that he rode? I love that guy. Yeah. See? So I know about him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying I ignore them. Um, But I haven't seen the new one. But Adam, you are a Marvelite. I mean, admit it. I saw everything everywhere last week. You're right. What the hell was what the hell was that you say? And how in the world did it get 11 nominations? Yeah, Joseph, I'm telling you, it's not to our taste. It's just a movie that doesn't leave that woohoo in your mouth for some people, and I'm one of them. Um, and I'm not apologizing for it. I am just saying that it's the first movie in a long time that if it wins, I won't be angry. Uh, because I understand why people like it. I just don't, for me. Um, a couple of performances I enjoy, but there are some things that I just, you know. Oh, thank you, honey. Careful. Oh, look. Hey, it's a volcano. On the Patreon page, I showed a picture of my husband. He's recently retired uh, next to his uh, espresso machine that mixes science and art together. So he gets to, to tinker and be creative. And uh... oh, this is so delicious. It isn't funny. I'm learning so much about coffee. If you don't drink coffee because it's bitter and awful, it's because you don't know coffee. And neither did I. Until I took let, let my husband take a class. I, I did that for him for his retirement. Uh, that, again, is a digression. I could talk about that if I. But uh, I took him to New York for two days, and he had coffee training. That's the whole reason we went. We did not see theater. We did not see Eiffel Tower. We did not see. We did see the Empire State Building because we were near it. And I said, wow, that looks a lot like the Empire State Building. My husband said, yeah, it is. Uh, so funny stuff like that. But um, we were there for his training and mostly. And then I did divert to see MoMA because I'm a big stop motion animation fan, a huge Guillermo del Toro fan. He is a good friend of mine, I'm happy to say. And uh, I had to go see it. It was incredible. It was incredible. And uh, on my uh, page, we're going to do a walk through MoMA for my patrons. Like I said, you get a heck of a lot for $5. So think about it. And then get on it. Because once you do, I think you'll like it. Uh, hello, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> everything all at the same time or whatever the thing is called is going to win best picture. I could not get through 20 minutes. I tried twice. It's probably going to no, Mark. No, no. I think it's going to be Banshees of Inisherin. Let's see who's right. I think it's going to be Banshees of Inisherin. It's got enough whackness and it's also got some great acting. There's so many actors in there that are killing it. Colin is really something. That guy just keeps delivering and keeps delivering and keeps delivering in either an American accent or his original accent. The guy is just a rock star. I mean, for real. And then he's opposite another guy who's a rock star and a woman who's excellent. That movie is just, if you haven't seen it, do not pass go. Do not collect $100. Go $200. Go see it. It's, it's such a brilliant film. And I agree with you, Mark. Uh, we're just not the demographic. I didn't say age either. Okay. Mark is a lot younger than me. And so is, um, and so is Joseph. I can feel that you're younger than me. Uh, and it's not age. It's just taste. 
artiste is not that. Okay. Okay. Some people like tea. Some people like coffee. Maybe we need to learn about it. I did. The coffee's amazing. Uh, but wow. That's all I'm saying. Different tastes. Some people are vegan and I'll never understand why. Uh, so uh, to not have so many foods at your fingertips, it's a choice and I, I respect you for it, but I'm just never going to be vegan. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, we admire you, Terry, he says. Okay, wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. We admire you, Terry, your transition uh, your transition in it is a tribute to you and the tribe. I know I can be a bit cryptic, but that's, that's by choice. I get it. And thank you for saying that. If it hadn't been for you guys this morning, I could not do what I'm doing right now. And that may be cryptic unless you're in the tribe. Okay. I'm watching the President's Day Yellowstone Marathon right now. What? There's a Yellowstone Marathon today? Ooh, ooh. What channel is that? I know. I know where it is. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go put it on. Thank you, Joe. I love that. Are they starting from season one? You know that I haven't really seen all of season five because I saw season four last year because it was nominated for Screen Actors Guild. So I saw season four, which got me hooked on Yellowstone. And now I'm working my way one through three. So maybe I'll just make it easy myself and put it on the channel. Is it FX? No, it's Paramount, right? Just Par I don't know what it is, but anyway, thank you. Banshees of Inisherin swept the BAFTAs. Exactly. It's a brilliant, brilliant movie. What's funny about Banshees of Inisherin, it was the British film of the year. It was best British film, and it's not British. <laughs> but I love that. I think it's adorable. I think it's absolutely adorable. And uh, that's really super cool. Yeah, BAFTAs were really something. But Banshees is a great movie. Um, it's, it's a great movie. The other movie that won a lot was, um, um, all quiet on the Western front, which is all in German, but it is a very good, uh, retelling of the story. I saw the original, you know, way back when it's good. It's good. I just don't think it's going to hold a lot of, a lot of water here, but again, if it won, I'd be happy too. you know? So, uh, my vote is for Banshees. Yep. Playing vulnerable is very hard. James Dean played inner turmoils very well, although he only made three movies and became a legend. Bob, he was, he had inner turmoil. If you read about uh, James Dean's life, he had a lot of inner turmoil. He just really, really, and this is what is about being an actor. You tap into those emotions. That's why, you know, Steve Carell being funny, 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 funny might have been to protect him. And now he's like showing us some of the challenges. Oh, it's so good. If you guys can see the patient, please do. It's so flippin' brilliant. It blew me away. And it was the last thing I watched because I was like, oh, there can't be a series that I like. And then, bam, there was. This is your laughing place. Yeah, the the this is this is the place where, you know, for free, you you don't have to deal with all that is deep within me. But you do get to see some. Women talking was a waste of my time. Really appreciate the honesty. Yeah, Justin. Oh dear Lord. Oh dear Lord. The whole time you watched it, you were like, what the what the? Seriously, I would sit through uh everything everywhere all at once before I'd sit through that movie again. This woman talking was just like, no, why? Why'd you make it? Why do we need to see it? And uh, no, yeah, I'm with you. No, it just, no. I don't think it's anybody's cup of tea, but it definitely wasn't mine. I thought Spielberg filmed the movie like he was still the young man that started out. It is simple, a beautiful tutorial of young directors who want to follow their footstep. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like Spielberg. I'm sorry, Diane, I can't follow that. I know what the story is. I know it's his history. I know it's his life, but it doesn't feel like he directed it. I think he found a student to direct it and put his name to it because we aren't going to follow that student. Are we? No, but if you put Spielberg's name on it, we're going to go see it. Of course we are, especially if it's about Spielberg's life, but it definitely wouldn't have gotten nodded. It wouldn't have gotten an Academy Award nod or all the nods he's getting if Spielberg's name wasn't to it. So I think he did a guy a favor and there's nothing wrong with that. It just doesn't feel like a Spielberg movie to me. That's all. That's all. I mean, I can't say it any plainer. Mm -hmm. Yep, some of the objects used to make 
jump points and everything everywhere were absolutely unnecessary. Didn't bring anything to the film other than cringe or shock value. Joseph, I couldn't have said it better myself. You are exactly talking about the innocence in incidents that I'm talking about. Just didn't need them. Didn't want them. Didn't, didn't, just, I'm with you. Just thank you for stating it so eloquently. David says, I like your take on the fact Fablemans does not have a Spielberg imprint. I agree. The best scene was David Lynch at the end of John Ford as John Ford. And why did we have to wait so long? God, if they'd have put that in the front, I would have sat through it with, with a better attitude. I just, I just love David Lynch. I worked with him, of course, on um, the original uh, Dune. A lot of fun. He's just as, 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 as you see him there. A lot of fun to be around and, and, and got a, got a good heart. If you haven't seen his YouTube channel, which is basically him looking out the window and telling you the weather and then picking the number of the day. Uh, I can't believe how funny that is. And it's just because it's watching David do David. So, um, uh, rumor has it he might go back and do a longer version cut of Dune because a lot of people are not liking the new Dune because it's too human. It's not enough like the real, like the book. So he had a version that they told him he couldn't do. But now that he's older and he is the David Lynch, uh, he thinks he can maybe get it somebody to let him cut it and then show it to us. And I certainly would love it, even if he just says it's on, it's on the internet or on YouTube. I'll be there. I'll be there with bells on because I love his work. Um, but you're right. That's the best scene. You're absolutely right, David. It's the best scene. Diane says everything everywhere was a trip. A bad ass a trip. <laughs> I can't get over how many of you don't like it. That surprises me. I you see? You you don't you tell the truth and you find out that you you give others permission to tell the truth. Isn't that something? Thanks, guys. I appreciate this. Fablemans was just drawn out and boring at times, says Joseph. I haven't seen Banshees yet. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, when you watch Banshees, you're going to be like this. <laughs> and you might do this a couple of times. But it's wild. It is wild. We got to get together and talk frankly about that movie after most have seen it. It's incredible. It's incredible. But you do kind of do a little bit of written stimpy animation. You remember that cartoon? I don't even know why I like that cartoon. But see, I like Twisted. So um, one of the movies that didn't get any acknowledgement, and I think it's because it was a little bit for people to <laughs> chew on, was The Menu. Oh my gosh, I love The Menu. I've seen it five times now. I love it. I love it. I bought it uh, because I loved it so much. But so I like Twisted, okay? It's not because it's Twisted. It's just not, again, Everything Everywhere All at Once is not my cup of tea. Hi, Terry. How are you today? I prayed for your parents. Thank you, Mike. And I appreciate that because I'm waiting for a call. You remember I dashed off to talk to doctors about my dad? Yeah, they, they were telling me that he was doing better, but they wanted to put a pick line. You guys know what a pick line is? Um, so that they can give him antibiotics for his, uh, for that he's got to do because he's got uh, a, a bacteria in his spine that if they don't get rid of it, it could cause some serious problems. So yes, I have other things in my life, indeed. So Mike and Joseph, thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to see Quantum Mania tomorrow. Yes. Is it because it's a special AMC Tuesdays and you can see it for six bucks, Joseph? If you're a Stubbs member, you knew that, right? You're not going to see the Eiffel Tower in New York City because it's not here. It's in Paris. Uh, Eiffel Tower, you can see. You just need to know where to look. And I'm going to leave you with that. Um, so thank you, Joe. But Empire State Building, and that was the one we were near. So we did get to see it. Uh, Joe, I thought it was a real marathon being held in Yellowstone. <laughs> it took me a minute. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, Diane, I love you. I'm just going to say I love you. I see she's a member too of the tribe. This is honesty at its ultimate. Diane never had to even say that. But the tribe members, they're they're a different cut cloth. So if you think you're that part of the cloth, please come join us. I don't I don't put big price tags on that deer because I think it's important we all be together in that realm. So think about it. The marathon on the Paramount Network has been going since Friday night. It's on the last episode of season four now, and I will start season five at 2.18 p.m. Eastern, 
Okay, cool. So I could see season five if I wanted to, right? Yes, on the Paramount channel. Well, I may just have to do that. Oh, yes. David says, did you see Lynch's short, What Does? Yeah, I did. It was awesome. You're right, David. I forgot about that one. But I, I see anything David does, I like. I really do. Except for he did one that was really, really weird, I remember. That I didn't understand. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it was a little bit too weird for me. But most of the time, I love his work. I mean, you can't love everything that everybody does, right? Yeah. I mean, even Guillermo del Toro, I'm a super fan of. There's things I don't, I'm not a big fan of what he does. Like, I'm, I'm not a fan of Hellboy, but I watch Hellboy because my friend plays the fish guy. You all know him, right? Doug Jones. He's a real good friend of mine because we did Monkey Bone together. He played the Yeti in Monkey Bone. So we're, we're good friends, but I love what I follow Doug too, because Doug is another brilliant performer. And, uh, and so I like, I like watching him too. Yes, you are right about James Dean who shared a mutual friend, Jane Withers. When she talked about him, she referred to him as the poor boy. He liked Jane and looked at her as a big sister. She did his laundry for him. The co-star, the co-star read in giant with him, uh, meaning R E A D probably Bob, uh, rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor giant is brilliant. And I have it on Plex. Yeah. It's one of my favorite movies, you know, set up your spinning wheels, girls. I love that line. And she says, you know, come on. I used to talk politics. Why are you saying politics are men? Why are you separating the men from the women? You idiots. Yeah, it's good. Elizabeth Taylor at her best. It's one of my favorite, favorite films with everybody involved for a multitude of reasons. If you have not seen this film, you need to, but take popcorn. It's a long one. It's very, very, very good. Uh, sorry, you did. Uh, did you, sorry, did you see... What did Jack do? Hilarious and strange. Yes, I like his hilarious and strange stuff. Like I was saying, I know what you meant. I know what you meant. Bob's doing the the hearts and the faces and the flowers and everything all at once. Uh, <laughs> guys, I would wait for more comments, but I got to run. I've got to go see my dad and my mom today because I pushed it off because I did my taxes over the weekend. And the pressure is great. That's all I'm going to say to you now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today. I know it was a short one, but and thank you for making it a short one. Uh, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate what you had to say. And we're going to talk more. But Terry TV is going to be many subjects now, not just Disney. There are some Disney things that I do want to point out and talk about. Like a lot of people were talking about how this runaway railroad, which I didn't even know where it was. I now know it's in Toontown, uh, has been malfunctioning. So you go to see it, make sure it's working and pray that it's working or wait until they get their act together and get all the kinks out of it. Much like a new car. Um, plan your best with the Disney. And if you need anything or Disney hacks, also remember that, uh, this Friday will be my last ask me anything every single week. It's going to be once, once a month for at least the next couple of months. It may be twice a month. I know Joe has asked me if I could do twice a month. Maybe I will. But for now, the next two or three months, it'll be once a month. I've got a lot on my plate. And uh, if you want more, join the tribe. And as promised, cheers, David. As promised, I will give you that again. Go check it out. There's no harm in checking it out. The bottom tier or the base tier, the entry tier, let me say it that way because there is no bottom. It is the tier that most join up for and i encourage you to it's five dollars a month so if you really really want to join and finances are tight put that quarter in a jar do it every day for 25 days and at the end of it you will be able to be every single month with me shows you have skin in the game makes me come i put a lot into the patreon page i give a lot and i'd love to have you there if it's something for you try it for a month um, it could be just the right thing. Love, hugs, guys. Be well, be good, be safe. And um, let's see. Here it says, be right back. Got to run downstairs real quick. Uh, yeah, I'll be gone by then. And praying for you and your family. I love movies. Also, I love the back and forth discussions and hugs. Yes, and we're going to talk more movies, Diane, because I don't do a lot of music. I can't because I have to dance to it. So movies are what I listen to. Uh, many people listen to music every single day. I watch a movie every single day because I am obsessed. I tend to watch the same one. And then there's series I love like Doc Martin that I have playing at night because I can't be, I can't have a quiet home 
at night. And I'll explain that too later. Okay. Hugs and loves. Do something nice for someone. It'll make you, let me put it here. It'll make you feel a whole lot better. So if you're depressed, go out and do something nice for someone. Say a kind word, buy them coffee, whatever. Okay. Love you. Take care. Oh, we're ending now. Okay, everyone. Have a great week. Bye for now. Go see Yellowstone. Yeah. <laughs>